In the current alien canon timeline, not many attempts have been made by anyone to truly weaponize the xenomorph species XX121. This is mostly due to the difficulty of obtaining a xenomorph specimen, and then also being able to control and contain it long enough to actually make a reasonable dissection or studying effort on the creature. However, there have been a few times that the Wayland uh, Yutani Company were able to succeed in weaponizing the xenomorph in some very interesting but also terrifying ways. Within the new line of Alien comics titled Aliens Resistance, we get to see possibly the best and also most extreme form of the Xenomorph species being weaponized. Within the story, Wayland Jutani, through unknown means, have possession of a large collection of overmorphs, and therefore facehugger specimens. The comic is supposed to take place sometime in the late 20, uh, 2130s and 2140s, and at this time Wayland Jutani were preparing to test a new type of biological weapon attack strategy. They procured a lone planet in the more unknown regions of space, turning it into a black site. After this they went about collecting certain poorer colonists from various planets such as Earth, who were willing to climb aboard any old company ship if it meant they could start a new life somewhere else in the galaxy. Unfortunately for at least one of these transport ships it was diverted off course and presumably some bullshit excuse was made for its disappearance. The near 2000 people aboard that particular ship were all transported to the black site, knocked out with a chemical gas and impregnated with xenomorph chest bursters via the face huggers, then left on the surface of the black Side planet to suffer their inevitable fates. This was all one giant attempt to see what a few thousand xenomorphs could do to a planet that was a near perfect match to Earth's environment and biosphere. Although this uh, was not specifically a weapon test against humanity, it did seem like something that was being developed for if they did want to use this strategy against a human population, or a human populated world, in order to gauge not only its effects on the inhabitants, but the changes to other wildlife there, the habitability of the planet, as well as if a widespread xenomorph outbreak and hive structure formation would in fact begin to terraform the planet to the xenomorph's specific needs. While we are yet to see the after effects of the black site weapon test, we are aware that the follow up comic Aliens Rescue is set to explore the black site many years after the infestation was released, and so should be quite interesting to see the fallout of such an extensive alien outbreak that was never dealt with. On at least two separate occasions, there were attempts by both Wayland Jutani and the United Systems military to, through study of the xenomorph biology, create a classical uh, weapon rendition of the xenomorph's acidic blood. During the same time period that the xenomorph black site tests were occurring, Wayland Jutani had already begun to successfully engineer ballistic weapons with the xenomorph biology. In one known case, Wayland Jutani created a ballistic round bullet casing that was tipped with a destructible cap. The cap was filled with a small amount of the xenomorph's acidic blood. How the Wayland Jutani uh, company managed this feat is unclear, with the only important thing to note that is that they somehow did. It is possible that they used part of the xenomorph's tissue itself to house the acid, as it is really the only known substance in the alien universe to date to be able to contain its corrosive effect. Upon being fired, the bullet will collide with an intended target, with the resulting velocity of the bullet breaking the containment cap, allowing the acid to make contact with the immediate surrounding areas of the target. While only a small amount of acid would be carried by each projectile, it would still be enough to inflict quite considerable damage to the target. If you thought getting a bullet was bad enough, try to imagine a mass of corrosive acid rapidly eating the surrounding areas of your wound, meaning that if you were shot in the leg instead of just an entry and possibly an exit wound, you would more likely be looking uh, at having your leg fall off or like from being eaten away by the acid or needing amputation dependent on the severity of the injury with almost no connective tissue left to salvage. We actually see an example of this during the Resistance comics where Amanda Ripley is barely grazed by a bullet. Under regular circumstances she could have just slapped a bandage on that sucker and kept on trucking. However due to the tip being ruptured from its brief contact with Amanda the acid contained within was able to partially uh, corrode her skin, causing immense pain and severe upper tissue damage. A direct hit would have undoubtedly led to a much deadlier result. During the 2370s and 80s, the United Systems military were hard at work attempting to recreate the xenomorph species 
from the genetic samples left behind by the deceased Ellen Ripley on Fury 161. Now, while they did succeed eventually after many hard years of work, they only scratched the surface of what was possible with the creatures. For the most part, the USM created a bunch of conceptual projects for when they did eventually begin to utilise what they had learnt. One specific concept was a projectile spray weapon that could have utilised a gun-like formational structure that housed a large xenomorph acidic blood container, made from xenomorph tissue in a similar fashion to the Weyland yutani acid tipped bullets, but in a much larger and more potent form. Instead of the projectile possessing a small amount of deadly acid, the projectile is deadly acid. Practical applications would be nearly unlimited from the combative attacks on people and uh, defensive bunkers, walls and blockades being simply melted away by this uh, weapon. This could mean that any type of blockage could become nearly useless. It is notable that because of the density of the liquid, the ejection system would be limited to around 15 to 20 meters with a wide nozzle for maximum damage. However, a narrow nozzle with a high ejection pressure and pathway could probably achieve something closer to maybe 50 to 100 meters at its very limits, with the damage not being as severe. Sadly, we never got to see this weapon in use or in action due to the USM losing their xenomorph specimens during the fall of the Auriga military starship. Another concept that was partly completed that was not actually a weapon itself but would have acted as a control system for a weapon with the weapon uh, actually being the xenomorph itself during the USM's testing and development of possible xenomorph um, weaponry utilizations it is revealed that they had plans to attempt to use xenomorphs as a direct combatant or group soldier they aimed to utilize an advanced version of the sh of a shock collar or headpiece to influence the xenomorph's motor functions to the point where the creature would subside to the torturous inflictions and allow itself to be somewhat tamed and then controlled. The headpiece would achieve this through an array of intense electrical stimulations aimed to cause great pain to the creature in question. This could be performed in such a way as to basically train the creature to follow instructions and to train it to only attack certain targets on command. We see the precursor to this tech in the research conducted aboard the Auriga in Alien Resurrection. In one scene we view a scientist as he gets up and close and personal with his xenomorph test subjects while they are in a containment chamber. As he does, one of the xenomorphs snaps its inner jaw towards him, an obvious sign of aggression and defiance against its captor. In response, the scientist hits the xenomorph with what appears to be a liquid nitrogen, which causes the creature much anguish and pain, after which the creature again goes to make an attempted attack on its captor before viewing that the scientist had his hand hovering above the button that controlled the nitrogen spill. This proved that the xenomorph could be taught through negative reinforcement to refrain itself or even more complex cognitive uh, control measures that would be required if it was to be developed as a weapon in combat. The notable problem is that uh, the USM scientists ran into is that if the xenomorph had another of its kind nearby, they could show an affinity to problem solve a way out of their captive states and return to their primal nature. Again, seen in Resurrection, the xenomorphs are quite willing to sacrifice one of their own in order to free themselves from captivity. With the film depicting a xenomorph being viciously attacked by its brethren, in order to gut it basically and release all of its acidic blood contents to create an escape through the flooring panels of their containment chamber. Much the same I do feel would occur if the USM were able to fit them with these shock collars uh, or some something along the lines. They may be able to get close to each other and be able to remove them or damage them, freeing each other before turning on their human controllers and just running wild. On top of this, the xenomorphs also seem to almost ignore their pain sensational drive altogether when in the presence of a corresponding queen. The queen's telepathic link with her hive uh, of drones and warriors outweighs their individual desires and pains, meaning that if a queen was within even the same star system, the operational efficiency of the collars would be severely compromised. Whale and Jutani, after acquiring all research information and materials from the USM, after its fall, have nevertheless remained optimistic that they will be able to discover a way to make the technology viable. And even if the creature does go rogue, then it would be prudent to have a built-in kill switch or like a terminate button 
on any of these head uh, restraints to basically stop the creature from uh, rebelling against its creators, I suppose, which would be activated immediately prior to the rise of the before mentioned complications. That's essentially all the examples in the current alien canon of humans successfully weaponizing or conceptually weaponizing the Xenomorph to date. As more and more inevitable and inventive ways of weaponizing this creature begin to appear in canon, I will be sure to make a follow up video for you all. If you would like to see a video about something like the potential medical applications of the Xenomorph biology, then just let me know in the comments. Before I go, I just wanted to let you guys know about the merch store called Acheron's Colonial Marketplace. Here you can pick up a variety of Acheron and Alien themed merch from three distinct product lines, including shirts, hoodies, mugs, blankets, stickers, bags, and even phone cases. So if you want to support the channel and look good doing it, pick up some Acheron merch. But what other videos would you guys like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions you would like answered, please meet me down in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and go check out Project Acheron on Twitter and Discord. If you want to support me further, you can become a patron where you can get access to early and behind the scenes content the monthly and alien day giveaways, as well as the patron only engraved set of items. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Until then, this is Project Acheron, signing off.